Greetings and welcome to our review of Sea of Thieves, a shared world adventure game that tries to replicate the ultimate pirate fantasy. Players can take to the seas solo or crew up with friends to set sail, find treasure and adventure, or simply get drunk on grog while badly playing sea shanties. Sea of Thieves doesn't have a story in the traditional sense. The story that you'll embark on comes from the hijinks that you'll get up to on the seven seas. Teaming up with friends or even random players can result in hours of fun as you flip between taking on voyages, which make up Sea of Thieves' questing system, or simply getting up to mischief, whether that be in the form of grog races, getting completely slaughtered on alcohol and then trying to run to the ship, firing yourself from cannons at distant peaks, locking players in the brig and taunting them, or any of the other ways you can think of to generally make a nuisance of yourself. My time with Sea of Thieves has been roughly divided between those two categories, playing the game seriously and trying to accomplish goals, or messing around. Sometimes my crew and I will make a real go of trying to find treasure, kill skeleton captains, hunt and capture animals and assault skull forts. Other times we'll joke around, get drunk, play sea shanties or sail into a particularly brutal storm just to see what it's like. I've never not had fun playing Sea of Thieves and I will undoubtedly continue to have fun with the game when I rope my friends into playing it with me. However, Sea of Thieves suffers from a serious lack of content that means that once you've played a few long sessions of the game, you've pretty much seen everything the game has to offer. The activities I just listed constitute the entirety of Sea of Thieves' questing system, save for a thoroughly underwhelming random chance encounter with a Kraken. There are only three quest givers in the game, and they pretty much only give out the same singular type of quest each. There are somewhat different flavours to each quest, but every voyage you embark on for any given faction will basically have the same objectives. The Order of Souls, for example, will always send you to hunt down and kill skeleton captains to retrieve their possessed skulls to turn in for some gold. Sometimes you'll have to hunt down a single captain, sometimes you might have to hunt down five, but the basic structure of the quest remains the same. Sail to an island, fight waves of skeletons while waiting for the boss to appear, kill boss, loot skull, turn in skull for reward. It's the same with the other factions. Hunting treasure chests will sometimes see you have to visit multiple islands or solve a riddle, but it's the same quest over and over again, only the location will change. Once you've dug up one treasure chest in Sea of Thieves, you dug them all up. After the first few hours, you'll find that engaging with voyages is simply the most boring part of the experience. While you'll be having fun along the way with your friends, the actual act of playing the content in the game is something that you have to put up with, rather than being engaging or enjoyable in its own right. And all you can do with treasure is sell it for gold to a vendor. Who ever heard of a pirate game where you can't even open a treasure chest? You complete these voyages for two reasons. To gain reputation with each faction and to gain gold. Gold can be spent on cosmetic items to customise your character, their equipment and your ship. There are a lot of different things you can customise, from buying clothes and accessories to various different weapons and a smattering of attachments for your boat, such as different sails and whatnot. The issue is that while there are a lot of different things you can customise, the customisation itself is fairly shallow. There just aren't very many options for each type of customisation. Take clothes for an example. There are generally four different types of each clothing item that you can buy to tailor your character's look. While there are a lot of different options, ranging from hats to hooks, eye patches, shirts, dresses, boots, jackets and more, there's just not enough variety on short to really make this worthwhile. There are more options locked behind each faction's reputation, but these extra items tend to just be slightly fancier versions of clothes that you already had access to. Adding a corset or a sash to a dress doesn't really justify the massive amount of extra grinding needed to unlock and obtain it. It makes sense for the game not to have more powerful weapons or ships as part of its progression system, given the shared nature of its world, and I was totally fine with the cosmetics being the driving force behind progressing through the game. I like cosmetic systems in games. However, the one in Sea of Thieves is just so poorly and half-heartedly implemented that it feels like a massive missed opportunity, with very little to keep players engaged beyond the first purchase or two. Getting to the status of Pirate Legend is what the game is ultimately all about, however. By completing voyages and levelling up your reputation, you'll slowly be working your way towards becoming a legend, which will grant you access to a secret hideaway and some legendary voyages, which you can share with your non-legendary pirate friends. Given the massive amount of time you'll need to invest to reach legendary pirate status, coupled with how underwhelming the legendary voyages actually are, being essentially slightly remixed versions of the quests you'll spend grinding to get there in the first place, it really doesn't feel worth the effort. It all comes back to the core gameplay loop, which is the only thing that keeps Sea of Thieves from being a total disappointment. Yes, the progression system and content feels half-baked, like this is an early access game that forgot to tag itself as early access, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay when playing with a group of friends just about keeps this game from being a total failure. While nothing will match the magic of those first few hours as you explore everything the game has to offer for the first time, oblivious to the fact that you're racing through most of the game's content faster than you could possibly imagine, Sea of Thieves is a fun time with friends. There's very little direction given to you in the game and pretty much zero tutorials, leaving you and your crew to fend for yourselves and figure out how everything works through experimentation and exploration. 
Usually this drags the game down, but given the total commitment to teamwork necessary to be halfway successful in Sea of Thieves, it actually works really well in this context. Starting out with all your friends more or less having no clue what you're doing, and slowly learning is actually a really awesome experience. You'll slowly learn how to work the ship, figuring out what you need to do to complete voyages and lean into specific roles, such as driving, manning cannons and sails, crewing the crow's nest and more. The game successfully creates a very organic and satisfying skill curve that has you all starting out as clueless and slowly becoming a competent crew as time passes. And it feels great all the way through too, whether you're struggling to figure out how the basic functions of your ship work, or you're coordinating with each other like you almost know what you're doing. This organic learning also helps to immerse you in the breathtaking world that Rare have created for Sea of Thieves. It sounds really silly to actually say it given that this is a game about sailing the ocean, but the water effects in Sea of Thieves are outstanding. Water is something that a lot of games just fail to get right. It's a difficult thing to replicate well in video games in general, but everything from the way it looks to the way it behaves is simply spectacular, whether you're sailing through calm waters or bravely, or foolishly, fighting through a raging storm. This obvious attention to detail bleeds out into the rest of the game's presentation. Sea of Thieves' stylized art style works really well to create some memorable visuals. Sunsets and sunrises look incredible, and when combined with some fantastic ambient sound effects, the world itself begs to be explored. Unfortunately, there's no real reason to actually explore. Without taking on a voyage, there's nothing out there for you to actually find. Everything that populates this world is tied directly into the voyages you'll partake in. Sure, you can find the odd hidden treasure chest or two, but the world itself promises a lot more intrigue and mystery than it can ultimately deliver. There are plenty of islands that seem to hint at a rich history or a mysterious backstory that begs to be explored and unearthed, but it's little more than window dressing. Mysterious caves, spooky graveyards, and intriguing parietal art all work to draw you into the environmental storytelling that seems to be on offer here, but it all leads to nothing. Sea of Thieves offers a hollow beauty. Yes, the world is pretty to look at, and no doubt you'll find yourself in awe of the many wondrous sights you can behold in the game, but it's an incredibly shallow world with very little to discover in it. Honestly, almost every positive point that can be made about Sea of Thieves will eventually circle back around to a lack of content or depth. There are exactly three enemy types in the game. The Kraken, a rare occurrence that is, again, thoroughly underwhelming. The Sharks that you'll occasionally find on your travels. And Skeletons. Oh, so many Skeletons. That's it. Whenever you're fighting an enemy that isn't another player, it's a bloody Skeleton. Some of them will be armed with guns, some with swords, some not at all, but it doesn't change the fact that they are the only proper enemy that you'll come across no matter how many hours you play Sea of Thieves for. This might have worked if the combat had been at least passable, but the fighting mechanics in Sea of Thieves are pretty subpar. They're basic, awkward, and simply unsatisfying, whether you're fighting a band of skeletons or engaged with other players. You can fight with swords or with one of three different types of guns, the pistol, the blunderbuss, or the sniper rifle. There's that lack of content again. Engaging in combat simply isn't worth the time or effort unless you absolutely have to fight to complete a voyage. Enemies offer very little challenge unless they overwhelm you with numbers, there's no dodge function, no way to interrupt an enemy attack, and blocking is either 100% effective or 0% effective, depending on the type of attack you're facing. As with many of the mechanics in Sea of Thieves, it feels unfinished. Ship battles fare a little better. Fighting against other players on the water in ship-to-ship -ship combat can be exhilarating, as you each attempt to manoeuvre for advantage, outflank opponents, and change your strategies on the fly. There are a range of different tactics available to you, and fights are incredibly dynamic and can be long-lasting. However, these fights tend to become battles of attrition rather than compelling tactical encounters, essentially boiling down to who runs out of cannonballs or wooden planks for repairing hull breaches first. Worse still, the total lack of penalty for death means that killing enemy players on another ship is basically meaningless unless you sink their ship first. Even then, enemy ships respawn so close to where they went down that a repeat engagement is incredibly likely. In the end, Sea of Thieves is a fantastic concept that just hasn't been well executed. It has plenty of great ideas that are wasted because there simply isn't enough content to make this a game that you'll be compelled to play through, eventually becoming repetitive in just about every aspect. There are only three basic quests you'll need to play on repeat to grind out reputation and gold so you can unlock longer versions of the same quest and slight variations of the same cosmetic customization items that act as the game's progression system. And that's the entire game in a nutshell. It's fun to play with friends when you're partaking in a mixture of messing around and serious questing, but you'll have seen just about everything the game has to offer within a short handful of hours. Sea of Thieves isn't a bad game, but it is a disappointing one. The promise of an ultimate pirate simulator you can play with friends remains thoroughly unfulfilled presenting a beautiful, gorgeous world that feels empty with little to no reason to go exploring it thanks to a total lack of any sort of content that isn't capturing animals, digging up treasure chests, or killing endless hordes of identical skeletons. It's a shame because the foundation is here for a really solid multiplayer experience, but that's all the Sea of Thieves is. The foundation of a much better game 
rather than a full experience. Thanks very much for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving us a like, comment or even subscribing to the channel. And as always, keep it here at my Xbox and me for more reviews, commentary, let's plays and a weekly podcast. Have a great day guys.